Welcome back to Linux. We're going to look at TCP wrappers today, which is Etsy host allow and Etsy host deny. If you go to lab 14, then you can read about it there. It talks about starting a virtual machine and then finding this TCP wrapped services. Let's go look at some services first of all. So I'm going to open up my terminal and make sure it's in the screen here so everybody can see it. And then in my terminal, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sudo-s and become root. I'm actually becoming a super user object. So I'm a super user object. I'm a super user now, which who am I? I'll show that I'm root. And I'm going to look for what services I have. So I'll say, do I have service Apache 2 installed? So I'll say service Apache 2 status. And it says it is running. And what does it want to change? It wants me to check MySQL D uh, VSFTPD. Let's check that out. So I'll say service VSFTPD status. And you can see that one's running too. So I know I have at least two. And I'll go check SSHD. And we're going to see if it's SSHD or SSH. And it's just SSH. There we go. And so we have a couple running here. So moving on down the lab, we can write down that we do have these running. Uh, for, for the daemons we found in question three, determine which are directly linked to libwrap.a. And so right here, it's going to do LDD, which daemon name, and you see that back tick means it's going to execute the which and the daemon name, and then it's going to look for libwrap. So let's find out. So we'll just take that right there, paste that in, and we'll look for SSH. And I won't grep it the first time. The first time I'm just going to press enter. So I press enter, and you can see all these little things here. And the next time, I'll go ahead and type the grep, and we're going for the grep lib wrap over here. So the grep lib wrap to see if it's actually used. So we're going to grep lib wrap and press enter. So nothing comes up on SSH. Let's look at Apache 2, nothing there. And we'll look at VSFTPD. All right, on VSFTPD, we do have something that comes up here. It says libwrap.so.0, and then this equal and greater than, and it tells us where it goes. So now we know that one. Let's pop down. It says, for the damage you found in Q3, determine which are indirectly linked to libwrap A. And then we're going to do that as strings, which daemon name in grep host access. Now the strings takes regular ASCII text out of something like a binary file and shows it to us on, on the screen. In this case, we're going to look at the output of which and whatever the daemon name is. We're going to grep host access. So strings, backtick, which, and we'll do the uh, Apache 2. And if we just type this, and press enter, you'll see all the crazy information it gives us. And it pops up a bunch of stuff. So we don't want that. We want to go over and we want to grep for information. That grep right there will filter, there we go. That grep right there will filter information for us. And you can say they're looking, they're looking for hosts underscore access. So let's look for hosts underscore access comes nothing with Apache 2. And let's see if anything comes up with SSH. Nothing comes up with SSH. And we'll check VSFTPD. And we do have a hosts access there. So going back over the lab, we're going to create access rules. So in this, there are two files to look at. One is hosts.allow and the other is host.deny. So if we look at these, we'll go bi etsy host, and we'll do vim, vim etsy host.allow. And you can see, oh nice, provides an example right there, all that kind of thing. And we can actually set up, and you notice there's a new line character right here, so don't forget to put a new line character in there. So this is the host allow. Anything in this list is allowed to access our system. It's sort of like uh, having a firewall that you can specify on your system through two different file types. And let's look at host.deny. 
in just as the name, as you'd expect, host.deny means those systems or IP addresses are denied from accessing our system. So the very first thing our system will do is it will look at host.allow. If it's not in host.allow, then it will look in host.deny. So let's go edit host.allow and give an example of what we can type here. We could type vs ftpd colon and all. We could space there, all. New line, and that new line is, is important there. So vs ftp colon all. And that means everybody can access our, our FTP server, which it's already like that. So since we already have that setting, I'm going to take that out. Let's go to host.deny. And if we want to block everybody, then we would type vsftpd colon all. Enter. Now you notice right here, this now blocks everybody from being able to FTP in. If we want to choose just specific people or specific IP ranges, we can type 192.168.1 and just leave it like that. Actually, I think we just leave it that way and that will block all your IP addresses from getting in. Um, or let's say you just want 128. There you go. Now that IP address can't get in. Uh, if we want anybody from hct.ac.ae, they can't get in. Um, or 10.0.0.2.15, that would be blocked. And so this would block it. And this takes effect immediately. Now, I don't want to save those changes because there's no need to. So now if we scroll down, Create one rule and Etsy host deny as follows. The exception address used above is denied access to all TCP wrap services. If we're denying something, like uh, let's go over here, um, pick one of these IP addresses. If we pick one of the IP addresses and we say all colon and then that IP address, it denies it to everything on our system. So let's go into host.deny. And down here we would say open all colon and then the IP address. Whatever IP address is given on the test or on the lab, just use that one. And we'll just say it's 128. That would, and once again, open the line at the end there, this would block everyone with this IP address from getting in. So if I were to save this, just save it like that, it's now effect it now has taken effect. It's now effective. I'm going to delete it because I don't need it. But that's TCP wrapping right there. And I think that is about the end of the lab there. This is an example where you can log into it after you deny it. And you can see it fail. And that is all. So I hope you, uh, you see the TCP wrappers and how that's used. We're not going to be going into much depth with uh, with TCP wrapping in this course, but that does give you a little information.